Coach, do you, do you see Jabari Small as somebody that could give you 20, 25 carries in a game? I really do. You know, one thing about Jabari that he's done a great job, he's added armor to his body. So, you know, you look at the last game of the season, I think he weighed out at about 199. This year, he's been weighing in consistently between 212 and 215. And like that, it's just going to help him down the road. As we get into games down the stretch, like being able to finish games is what we've been talking about. So the increase in carries should really uh, help him a ton. You know, the added weight should help him a ton to try to increase his carries. And uh, that's one of the things we've been really focusing on with him in the offseason and obviously in fall camp is just trying to make sure that you understand how to finish the practice. Adam in Austin. You, when you're deciding uh, who plays on Saturdays, where in the list is pass protection a determining factor? How much is that considered? Well, it's a big part of it. You know, when we look at the entire big picture of it, obviously some weeks we'll have better matchups or different matchups, I should say, than other weeks. But the biggest part of you got to be a complete back in this offense. You know, you got to be able to run the ball. Obviously, when you get a chance, you got to be able to play without the ball, and that includes pass protection. So that goes into it, you know, without saying just being able to do all facets of the game. You know, we want guys that are all-purpose backs, that we don't have to take off the field and throw it down for whatever the reason, whether we have to throw the ball or the ball in hand or whether we have to protect. But we want to make sure we develop in the complete back. You know, doing practice or, you know, even in the film room, one thing we're always talking about, one thing we're always looking at is how those guys go about taking care of business from a pass pro perspective and all the other little things that they have to do. Coach, you, you talk about Jabari putting on that weight. In what ways have you seen in his limited work and scrimmages and stuff, his game maybe get better, improve, change? And then kind of where's Jalen Wright with, you know, as far as health, being back full go for, for the rest of the way? Well, I see the added strength is the arm tackles. You know, last year, you know, you talk about the shoestring tackles. You talk about from a defensive lineman maybe getting a pad on a, on a running back as he comes through the line of scrimmage. Those plays have been able to now be extended because Jabari has that added weight. You can see the different mentality. You know, one thing about weight and strength is it changes your mindset as well. So when you talk about down there in the red zone, short yardage, he just has a different mentality about how he's going to go ahead and get that first down and go pad when we talk about pad plus two, all those different things. The mindset has really changed for him with that added weight. Protection-wise, you can see him now sticking his face on people. You know, we're doing protection about two or three days out the week because Coach Hype, Coach Goldish, myself, we all wanted to make an emphasis of that going into the season. And now you can see he's not scared of that contact. He wants to get, it, get his face in the fan. He wants to, you know, get in that contact. Uh, when you talk about Jalen Wright, you know, progressing every day. You know, like every day he gets a little bit better from a standpoint of he's able to do more. Today he was able to do a little bit more than he was a couple of days ago. So I think I feel confident in saying that he'll be ready by the time we enter the first game. But, you know, it's a process with him, and he's going, going through every day. He's getting a little bit more. Patrick? Coach, with Justin, how have you seen him build on, on what he did in the spring? What have you liked about what you've seen from him in camp, and, and where can he still get better? Well, the third block for him was probably his best set of practices since he's been here. I mean, from the standpoint of him running with more confidence, we saw flashes of the Justin that we saw in high school. We saw him have an explosive play in the scrimmage the other day. We saw him being able to catch the ball out the backfield a little bit today at practice, you know, doing some things like that. I think where he has to get better, it's where all young guys usually have to get better at, and that's pass pro. Uh, more so than technique. I think we've done a good job of him understanding at the minimum where his eyes belong. You know, uh, he was here in the spring, so he had an opportunity to go through some of that spring, uh, summer camp as well, and now we're into fall camp. I, I don't have an issue of him knowing who to block. Now it's just about the mannerism, about how to actually get there. I think that's the biggest thing for him right now to continue to work his technique. When we talk about hands inside, squeezing the elbows tight, keeping our, keeping our butts to the quarterback, all those little things that they probably don't talk to you as much in high school because he was mainly the primary runner. It's things he has to learn how to do playing without the ball is going to be really important for him. I know Dylan came in a little bit late in the summer. Can you give us a, a breakdown of his game and your expectations of him? He's done a great job. You know, he's kind of a fan favorite right now in the building uh, with his attitude, his personality, which we knew when we recruited him. Uh, every day he comes out there and it seems like he does something really good with the ball in his hand. Uh, an explosive play. We talked about uh, him being a guy that was going to have those sexy runs, those long explosive runs, and that's what he's held true to form. He's that guy that every day in practice, he's been coming out there. He finds a way to get through the small creases. You know, he's a smaller back, and he gets the top end speed really fast. We've been really impressed with his natural vision and his natural patience as a runner. 
Uh, obviously, the thing that he has to continue to grow in more than anything else is that physicality part of it. And that's going to come as, as he gets in games more, as he gets in practice and those live reps more. I like the way Dylan's operating within our offense as well. You know, he's playing with that sense of urgency that we need to do in our offense because we play so fast. Hey, Coach, I didn't see Lynn J. Dixon out there today. Is that anything of concern at practice? No, nah, you know, he tweaked his ankle, so, but he's fine. He should probably be back with us tomorrow, uh, Lynn J. Uh, we just kind of keep him in, doing some limited work, you know, strength and conditioning, make sure he gets back 100%. But uh, Lynn J is progressing fine. What does he add to that running back room? And is he a guy you see could have some significant playing time this season? You know, really still early to say right now. You know, we, we're glad to have him right now. We're happy that he's here in the building and learning and progressing each day. Uh, the biggest thing, Lin Jack, you know, is 23 years old and you know, he's played a lot of college football. You know, he's had success on a high stage and at a high level. So really just excited about him learning and progressing uh, throughout, throughout the weeks. And I think that's one thing, you know, making a commitment to making sure that he's understanding what to do and how to do it. You know, we'll see how, how he goes and how he learns and progresses throughout the, the rest of camp. Uh, do you have a, kind of a good feel for how, how you want to handle the rotation in the backfield? How many guys would you ideally like to play? And, and is there a certain number of carries that you, that you want to uh, you know, limit Javari to? You know, do you kind of go in with the target goal for not overworking him, I guess? You know, we really never know. You know, the, the biggest thing is we're always trying to do a great job of making sure we monitor those guys without, during the course of the game. Uh, if a guy gets a hot hand, obviously we potentially want to stay with him. If a guy is going into a lower, we want to make sure we get into rotation. So I never really go into the game saying, hey, this guy's going to play 15, 20 snaps or whatever it may be. It's more about like how they progress throughout the course of the game. Now we do enter the game saying, hey, this guy's going to you know, basically be the one, two, three, four. However, the depth chart hits that week, depending on how they practice, obviously. But you never really know until you really get into the flow of the game. I will tell you this: you know, Jabari has, has, has done a good job of, of trying to do do his get his body right so he can finish games more than anything else. West and Jimmy. When you talked about Jabari adding that weight, was that something that after last season y'all went to him and said, "Hey, we'd like you to do this," or did he come to y'all and say, "Hey, I want to do this"? I think it was mutual. I, I think he saw what he needed to do to get better as a player. Obviously, our strength and conditioning staff and our nutritionist saw some things that he can improve in with his eating habits and his weight room habits. So I think it was a mutual mutual feeling. I mean, Jabari knew that you know he should have been a thousand yard back at the end of the year last year if he would have been able to play in all those games and do what he's supposed to do. There's no reason that he couldn't be one of the elite players in the SEC. But he knew he was going to have to get better. One of the things that you talk to the guys about at the end of the spring or at the end of the season is what do I need to do in the offseason? get better and that was the primary thing for him the second probably was making sure from a protection standpoint he got in the film room and understood what we were trying to do in each protection coach do you uh, do you feel like you need to identify a third down back I don't think so. I think all those guys have a really unique skill set. I think all of them are getting better from a pass protection standpoint. And we try to do a great job of recruiting guys that can be all purpose backs, not just guys that are big, strong guys on third and short, but also guys that can catch the ball out the backfield as well. So I really would like to develop the entire back and complete back. I don't want to just, you know, pinpoint a guy or, or put a pigeonhole a guy that he's just a third down back or he's just a goal line back. They all need to have the mindset that we can do it all. You mentioned catching out of the backfield. Do you feel comfortable with all of your backs' ability to catch out of the backfield? I think some are better than others right now. You know, obviously we got some room. You know, everybody has a different skill set, and everybody can have some improvement in just some different areas. So, like right now, that's what we're developing. You know, we are out to practice before practice on the jugs machines, trying to make sure everybody gets an adamant, a, a certain amount of catches each and every day. There's no Laneith Whitehead, and, and you kind of mentioned that you want all your backs to be, you know, all around backs, third down backs. Is there a preference in terms of, you know, a running back in short yardage situations, or is it just kind of whoever's in that ball game at that time? You know, with the way we play and the tempo that we play at, sometimes, you know, you would love to get a guy in there that, you know, has a little bit more power, maybe a little bit more uh, a stouter bag that can push the pile forward. Sometimes with the way we play, that's not going to always be the case. But the difference is that sometimes the defense isn't quite aligned, right? So now, now you're talking about you don't have to have that big physical bag that traditionally offenses have had in the past. The biggest thing we look for is just the tempo through the mesh. 
you know, how fast and how violent a guy is going to hit it. Jabari last year, like I said, he was on 199, 200 pounds, but he probably was our most physical back through the mesh. That means, you know, there were several occasions last year where he pushed the power forward, where he was able to keep his feet driving on contact and still get that yard or two that we needed. So just because he was a smaller back, he played big. And that's really the biggest thing more than anything, even if you are a smaller back. You might have alluded to it there a little bit, but how much do you guys look at yards after contact in terms of evaluating your guys? A ton. You, you know, you hear me use the phrase, and your Coach Goldis and Coach Hyper used the phrase, pad plus two. That means yards after contact, minimum at least two yards we want to always be able to get. Uh, that's one thing with the weight that Jabari and the strength that Jabari has put on. That's what it has allowed him to be a much better version back of himself from last year. You know, he's doing some things, and not all, in all of them, too. You know, we saw from Jalen Wright in the spring. One thing we made an emphasis on is him running behind his pass, being more physical, having the ability to reduce. That means having the ability to get your pass down, play behind your pass, and then still go forward even after contact. So it's something that we're always looking at. You know, in the, in the room, we're always charting. Uh, me, graduate assistants, our quality control people are always charting exactly how many yards these guys are gaining out to contact. Finish in the back. You always talk about how you're trying to get these young guys up to speed, but with only five weeks of preparation before games in these fall camps, how, what do you focus on specifically to make sure they get up to speed? I think the ball mechanic piece for us is, is truly important. How, how fast the guy can get his eyes back to the sideline, how fast he can process the information. It's not just about being a smart football player. It's about being able to process information fast as well. Because when those signals come in from the sideline, you got to be able to get your cleats in the ground. you got to be able to execute at the highest level while still playing with the fundamentals. So some of those things from a standpoint of just understanding plays-wise, like what those guys are supposed to do. One great thing in the luxury that we have, all those guys were able to be here the first and second second session of summer school. So, you know, they got the, a dose of the installation in the summer school sessions, and then now they're getting the, basically a repeat of the installation now in fall camp, which has allowed them to really understand the system. We always tell them, if you don't understand the plays when we go into fall camp, it's going to be very hard for you to get on the field and very hard for you to play at the level that we need you to play at. So that's what those young guys, Justin was here in January, Dylan came in May, and it kind of fished the water right now. These guys have been really playing fast, really playing hard. We spent little time talking about the actual what you're supposed to do, and now we can get in really the nuts and bolts of the fundamental piece of the, the smaller details of what they got to do. Thank you, Kevin.